Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a beautiful card project featuring the new Flowers and Frames Stamp TV kit. Let me show you the tools and products you're going to need to make this project. First, you're going to need some stamps, and I'm using both sets of stamps that come in the Flowers and Frames Stamp TV kit. It's Frame and Flowers 1 and Frame and Flowers 2. Then you're going to need some ink, and the inks that I've chosen to use today are the Gina K Designs Powder Blue, Blue Denim, Fresh Asparagus, and Black. Put these aside. You're also going to need some cardstock, and the cardstock colors I'm using are the Gina K Designs White, and this is the layering weight white, our Black Onyx, and the Powder Blue. Then I also have some dies, and these come in the kit, and these are the rose dies. I'm going to be using one Spectrum Noir marker today, and I'm using color number DG2, but you can use any pale green marker that you want. I'm going to be using a white gel pen. This is the Ranger White Opaque pen. And I'm going to be using some of the foam squares. And last month, this was an incentive item, so you may already have these in your collection. If not, you can use any pop dot or any pop-up square you have. Then I'm going to be using some mono adhesive, and I'm going to be using a couple other dies. This is the die that comes in the Fancy Frame 1 die set. It's got the, the round... Um, frame and then this one inside. But we also have the Cheery Lynn dies and there's a circle one this size too. You probably have a die or a punch in your collection that's about the same size so you can use that instead. And then I'm using one of the inverted circles dies. This is from the Circle Stackers layers dies. So the layers are a little bit smaller than the regular ones. So these layer together very nicely. Now I want to start by showing you a couple little things about this stamp set. The roses, there are a couple different ways to use these, but my favorite ways to use them are as two-step stamping, not three-step stamping. I like the two-step, although you can do three-step stamping with them. Two-step gives you two completely different rose looks, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Let me open this up here. So, if you start with this particular one, this is the solid image, and you stamp this with a, a lighter color. I'm going to use Prickly Pear for this one. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use the sweet corn ink just to show you this okay so you're going to start with the solid one and stamp that you get a nice solid image there let me clean this because I'm going to be using this again so I use the double stamp scrubber and I use ultra clean to clean my clear stamps and rubber stamps then, if you use the larger of the two line art versions, you're going to get a very whimsical kind of look. And let's, well, we'll put some prickly pear on that. So let me show you that. And you can use the Misty tool if you want. You can use the stamp -a jig or you can just eyeball it. Um, I'm just going to eyeball it right now. I do have a video coming up using the Misty, but I, I want to show you how this looks just by eyeballing it. Okay, so we've got a little bit of ink on that, some prickly pear, and there we go. Now you can see how that looks. That just gives you the look of a very whimsical, sketchy kind of rose with some solid color in the background. Now you can also use this rose by itself and then watercolor it or use Copic markers to add shading and depth. So that's the middle size rose. Now for the other rows, let's do this one in the same color combination. This gives you a completely different look. I'm going to start with the sweet corn. 
and we'll stamp that. Okay, and then I'm going to clean that again because I'm going to be using blues today for my card project. Now here is the smaller rose. That one, let's take this one out, put it away. That one's going to give you a completely different look. We'll use the prickly pear again. This is going to give you kind of the opposite. It's really more for building depth into your project. See the difference? So one is a more sketchy outline, and the other one looks a little bit more like a two-step stamp to bring out depth. Now another really neat thing you can do with this outline one is stamp it in color and then outline it in an embossing powder like gold or silver, black, whatever you think. So that's just a little hint on stamping our roses. Isn't that pretty? So that's, this is the style I'm going to do today. So I've got that cleaned up and clean this one more time. I've got that cleaned up. Okay. So the card I'm going to make today is going to include blue. We're going to be using the blue colors. So I'm going to start by stamping three roses. And the first color I'm going to use is the powder blue. And I'm going to do that using the solid stamp. All right, so I'm going to stamp two of these because I need two small ones. Let me stamp that again. Okay, so there's two solid ones. And then I'm going to stamp the insides of those with the blue denim. And again, it's pretty easy to line these up. There's one. And there's two. Okay. Clean that off. Then we're going to use the larger version of this flower and stamp the backdrop again in the powder blue. that. And we're going to do, I always seem to want to stamp the uh, flowers twice. The second time I always get a better impression, so I usually use scratch paper to do that. Okay, and then the second one we're going to do with the blue denim. Let's see here. Oh, I have the bigger one. Let me get the right one on here. That's the bigger one. This is the smaller one. I could tell as soon as I laid it down next to it, it was outlining instead. There we go. Okay. And there's the other one. Okay. And it's kind of, the thing about these roses is even if you're a little bit off, it still looks really pretty. It, it doesn't really need to be dead on in order to look great. Okay, now I need one more piece of white cardstock, so I'll just use a little bit of this one. And I'm going to stamp these leaves twice. And I'm going to do that using the Fresh Asparagus ink. Once here, and once down here. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to put these aside for a second because I'm going to die cut these, but I want to stamp on this piece that's pre-cut. And this measures three and three quarter inches by five inches. And I'm going to use my B plate of my cuddle bug folder and I'm going to go to the Frame and Flowers one set and use the round 
frame. So I'll put that right on there. And this is going to be done with powder blue. So I'm going to ink that up real well. This hasn't been inked since yesterday, so I'm going to give it a little bit of extra ink. Okay. And then I'm going to stamp that right about here. And if you're going to mass produce these, I definitely would use a tool like the Misty or um, maybe your stamp a majig if you want to get them perfectly centered every time. This might be a little bit off, but we'll see. Yeah, that's a little bit off center, but that's going to be okay. All right, so now I want to stamp a greeting. And the greeting that I want to use is from the Rose set, and that's Happy Birthday. So. I'm going to put that onto my clear block here and then ink that up with the Gina K Designs Black Onyx ink. For those of you who get our Black Onyx ink, we left the word onyx off, but we only have one black, so this is definitely the right ink if you get it. Okay, and we'll stamp that. I'm going to test stamp this first on a little piece of cardstock. I want to make sure I have it inked up enough. Nope. All right. A little bit more ink on that. There we go. Okay. And we'll put that right here off to the side. There we go. And there's the happy birthday. Okay, now this piece is going to get layered on top of a piece of black onyx. And this black onyx cardstock piece is just an eighth of an inch bigger all around. And if you go to stamptv.com or on our YouTube channel, underneath the screen you will find the measurements for all of these pieces of cardstock. Okay, so we have that one like that, and we're going to put that onto the powder blue cardstock. Okay, now we're gonna do a little bit of die cutting. So I'm going to grab my cuddle bug, and you can use any die cutting machine you want with these dies. The Cheery Lynn die cutting machine is fantastic to use if you have any kind of problems cranking the handle that just cranks like butter but this one happens to be here in my studio I need to bring that Cherry Lynn machine over okay so I have an A plate and a C plate and I'm going to start with the roses so I'm gonna cut the small rose out first and just line that up like that. And then put this, the B plate on top. You can do it the other way too. You can have your B plate down and the C plate on top. Either way. I've cut into both of my plates so many times that it doesn't even matter to me anymore. Okay, so there's one rose. I'm cut another one. Make sure that's lined up well. I really like to just get right down on top of it, and I tend to um, be short, so I like to, to stand up and look right over that um, die cutting machine when I'm working in my stamp room. But if you're short and you don't want to stand up, you can always put a couple pillows on your chair and then you'll be able to, to get a really good view. That's probably what I should do. Okay, so there is the second one, and you can see how nicely that looks with that little white border around the edge. Now we're going to do the bigger one, and same thing. And this one kind of goes in the opposite direction. There we go. Let me just position that a little better here. And 
be plate on top and cut. Okay. So now my roses are all cut out and I'm going to cut out the leaves. Now, these leaves are very sketchy looking. They're just beautiful. And you can leave them just like this, but I also like to add a second color in there mm -hmm. with a little bit of uh, Spectrum Noir markers. Of course, you can use uh, Copic markers or any other markers you have. So there's one. And I will cut another one here. Okay. So there is the second one. You can see how that looks. All right, now that our die cutting is done, I want to show you a little way to decorate this rose. I really like adding a little bit of white into this particular style of rose. And that's where my Ranger gel pen comes in handy. So I'm just going to start it on a little piece of paper over here. Make sure I've got... Okay. So... All I'm going to do is just trace around the outside of each flower. And you can see that's starting to make that darker blue pop up a little bit. See that coming out? It's just a very subtle technique and you really don't have to be an artist to figure this out. You just go around the, the darker color line and you'll see a nice contrast there between those two. And you're going to go all around all of the lines on all of the roses. And you can you can add a little less or a little more. You could also do this with a glitter pen. Maybe you want to use your Stardust pen or your Wink of Stella pen and just accent around those darker lines with glitter instead. That would look beautiful. There's lots of ways to do this. And there you go. And you can even color these in if you want. That'll give you more contrast. The ones that are completely closed, you can color those. Okay. So that adds just a little bit of extra pop to it. You can see the difference between those two. So I like doing that. Now for these leaves, take the DG2 marker or any lighter green marker, and then I just add a little bit of color inside. And you can see with our water-based ink, it doesn't smear when you use alcohol markers, which I think that's fantastic. Love that. And that just adds a little bit of extra color into those roses. All right. Now we're going to cut out two more things using the cuddle bug. We're going to cut out another piece of white cardstock and a piece of black cardstock. And we'll start with the black. And we're going to cut out this inverted circle. Put the B plate on top and cut that out. There. And then we're going to cut one more out using this die. Now this die is from the center of that frame die one. And we're going to use a piece of white cardstock for that. And cut that out. Okay. So now when you mount these two together, you're going to get that little tiny edge. And these are really tiny edges between 
the uh, silver ones and the purple ones. But I like that because I have dies that already do a bigger edge, but I like this little edge. Okay, so let me get my cuddle bug out of the way. You're going to mount this white piece onto the black inverted circle. And then this whole panel is going to go right on top of that. And you can see how that just covers the stitching but still allows you to see that blue edge and it gives you that beautiful extra little pop of black to kind of play off of the black that you have around the perimeter of the white piece, the big white piece. And then you're going to lay these out however you want. You can lay some of the leaves down this way and you can lay some up this way and then you can alternate the flowers in different ways like that any way that you want let me show you my finished card you don't have to watch me stick those all down here's my finished card project what I've done is I've taped this one and this one directly onto the paper the two sets of leaves and then I've slipped the smaller roses underneath the petals of the uh, leaves and then the biggest one I popped up using one of the foam squares and you can see how that gives the whole thing a little bit more dimension. So that is my finished card project. I hope you've enjoyed today's video project. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for lots more inspiration featuring the new Flowers and Frames Stamp TV kit.